So let me tell you a little story about an honor mode run that went... Well, we'll get to that part. When Honor Mode released with Patch 5, I had already completed a neutral good run on Balanced Mode and an evil run on Tactician. So naturally, it was time to take on the challenge of Honor Mode, as none other than the Dark Urge. For those of you unfamiliar with what Honor Mode is, basically it's Tactician Plus, with a caveat of, if your entire party dies, you have to start the game over, back to the beginning, if you want to achieve victory in this mode. There's no previous save point for you to load back into, which also means that save scummers have to live with their decisions. <laughs> but luckily for me, I, I'm not scum, man. I already play that way for the most part. So accidentally thunder waving Alfira off the cliff was just another day in the life. No need to reload. Your song sucks. Now, if you make it through the game without TPKing, you are rewarded with the honor mode, Golden Die. Surprise! You done, Tardis? So my beautiful Dark Urge Drow set off on her journey with determination and excitement. She was ready to earn that golden die and redeem herself from the evil ways of her past. I decided to play this mode with actual honor, <laughs> at least my own definition of what it means in this case. No alt f 4 out of the game if I die, no research at all on the bosses with their new legendary actions, no cheese speedruns, no mods to aid me, no looking at chat for answers or tips, no leaving one teammate at camp at all times so it's impossible to ever TPK. And I was also determined to do most if not all of the optional boss fights that the game offers. Now if you didn't play that way, that's fine, don't get offended, okay? This is not an online competitive video game. It doesn't matter what you do personally. But for myself, I've just always had this thing in my brain where I can't allow myself to really feel a sense of achievement or real satisfaction whenever I take shortcuts. So I knew that I had to do this run in the way that felt honorable to me. Starting the quest for the golden die was a bit daunting, mainly because at this time I had no idea what kind of difficulty spike this mode was truly going to offer. It was the entering into the unknown that created this sense of intimidation. This was a great feeling though, I felt alive and I felt fully engaged with a game that at this point I was starting to feel a bit burnt out from. Overall though, Act 1 didn't turn out to be too bad. Non-boss encounters, even though they are technically more difficult, I didn't really feel that difficulty that much, it felt more so like I was just playing on Tactician. The surprise appearance of that second owlbear though in the owlbear cave did make me wonder what other surprises Larian had planned here. A little bit. Oh no. What was that? But I destroyed that owlbear and I killed the cub. I'm just kidding. I didn't kill the cub. Now, the first actual mild scare that I had in Act 1 was the Spider Queen. I tried to sneak over to her, but I got caught. No, no. Oh my god. <sighs> first wrench in the plans. Then I decided to be crafty and I snuck my lore bard all the way around and went for a thunder wave, hoping to push this nasty creature into the depths of the Underdark. All right, well, I guess Larian's not playing around. Plan two failed. Next thing you know, Lazel, my primary damage dealer is at half HP. She's poisoned and surrounded by a bunch of baby spiders. And if I attack these baby spiders, the queen will use her legendary action, Gossamer Tomb, and encase Lazel in a deadly web, ready to be devoured alive. Ultimately though, the encounter turned out just fine. Just scared me a bit in the beginning. I still put that damn spider down with all my party members alive, two of which had full HP. Ooh. Oh my god. Now the Goblin Fortress wasn't too bad. That place offers an environment that if used strategically will make it almost impossible for you to TPK in there. So just make sure to look around and take advantage of the environment. Heading into the Underdark, I met a friend named Boulette. Took that bastard down on the first encounter with it, then I raised it from the dead, kept it as a pet, and proceeded to destroy anything that moved down there. Including the cute innocent Mykonids. Didn't mean to, but it's not like you can go back to a previous load point. In fact, I murdered all of Sovereign Spa's family and friends. All of them. Brothers, sisters, cousins, lovers, cousins that are lovers. What? I don't control my kid society. You name it, and they met my blade in the teeth of my obedient land shark. I, of course, used non-lethal damage on Spa, though, because I'm a pretty nice guy if you just show me a little respect. I gave him amnesia, and when he woke up, he gave me rewards. Songs we sing now carry your spirit. 
<laughs> the dude just called me life chanter and I slaughtered every single freaking mushroom that was making any sort of movement in the underdark. <laughs> I love that guy. Fuck Bernard, he's dead. And onto the Forge of Grimms, which was my first almost TPK moment. I planned out my battle though and found out that most of Gal's spells can actually reach from above. So why would I bring him down? Strategically, that would be a bad move. After throwing hammers with my other party members for the double vulnerability damage, but literally missing every single throw at 70 plus fucking percent, I didn't do shit. Okay, I haven't hit a single attack yet. Next thing you know, Grim is dealing crazy thunder damage with his legendary AOE action. Two of my party members are now dead, Carlax missing 50% hit points, and I had to bring Pee Pants Gal down to try to kite the big bastard underneath the forge hammer. And then I made what some may call a 200 IQ play that no one has probably ever thought of before. And I shot my crossbow at the forge lever, bringing it down on Grim's big ugly head and launching me into a victory celebration. Let's go! Holy crap! Wow! But Wolfheart, I shoot arrows at levers all the time, it's not that impressive! No you don't, kid. No you don't. Now we've reached the end of Act 1 and we're at the Gif Yankee Crush fighting the Inquisitor Waraz. More like war ass. Dude sucks and I dropped them in round 2, even tore that bastard's eye out as a trophy. Let's move on to some real opponents now and that brings us into Act 2. Too. But actually, to be honest with you, Act 2 didn't really put me in any true scares of a TPK. Being the nice guy that I am, I decided to help Jahira and make her think that I like her only to later on let Ketherick expend all of his might and drop her dead in a single freaking turn. Seriously. Oh, shit. Focus your attack, soldiers. <sighs> See you later, Jahira. She died, and she's gone for good because you can't res those who are not officially companions yet. Oh well. For the first time ever, I murdered Marcus at the Last Light Inn with Isabel still alive and well. That was an accomplishment. Now with true honor, some may call it stupidity, I proceeded to push on and do all of the possible fights in the Act 2 area. Edward Scissorhands got a taste of his own medicine. He's dead. Garengoth Thorm got outplayed as I destroyed all the skulls very quickly and she was a breeze after that. Everyone's favorite hell beast, Yurgir, gave me a bit of a scare, but I took him by surprise, which gave me a really strong start. And ultimately I won, no problem. And then Big Daddy Balthazar also got his ass handed to him. I was actually quite worried about this fight before I got into it, but with some decent initial burst damage from my Battlemaster fighter and a nice choke point with a Guardian of Faith, Balthazar didn't stand a chance. Although I will say, when he cast Cloud Kill, I almost shit my pants. God bless, brother. Holy crap. And this brings us into the final Act 2 boss. Dead beat dad Ketherick. Ketherick actually has one of the best stories in the game, if you ask me. With a little planning ahead, I simply took a couple invisibility potions, snuck up a character to where Dame Aelin was being held to free her, and then I snuck Lazelle up to the Mind Flayer, and that gave me a really strong start. And then I just basically just kicked the Avatar of Merkel's ass, no problem. So let's move on to Act 3. Overall, Act 3 wasn't too bad. Many agree that at this point in the game, your characters can be really, really powerful, and that the game's difficulty doesn't really keep up that well. I think that's a common opinion well i did for the answer fight so shut up that's uh, fuck man this bastard gave me the biggest scare of the run so far i thought i was clever with the globe of invulnerabilities which might add were a huge help but answer started doing this attack that didn't deal damage but it caused my casters of the globe to fail concentration saves and then two of my globes disappeared on me and uh oh um i should probably honestly get shadow heart inside the globe before we do anything and my bard oh hi Lucky for me, I'm smarter than the average Norwegian lemming, and I decided that I should probably move at least one party member, you know, really far away from where Answer is in case he does some crazy AoE damage. What is this? Oh, it's over! Oh my god! Answer was just getting started though. Just, just pray that I don't TPK right now. Just, just pray. Count. 
This is the most intense fight I think I've ever had in my entire life in a video game. Using Death Ward on all four of my companions before the fight began turned out to be a pretty damn good strategy. Answer only had one HP, and you're damn right I shot a motherfucking magic missile at his ass. Of which he turned many of them into zero damage, but at least one of them got through, and that was the end of the undead dragon. One of these is gonna hit. One of these is gonna give me a... The rest of Act 3 wasn't too bad. I did all of the fights except Raphael. Now, the reason for that was I wanted to help Raphael this run and give him the crown to see how it altered the ending of the game. Regardless, Raphael wouldn't have stood a chance. I just slayed the undead dragon underneath the damn city. In celebration of that, I decided to have sex with a Mind Flayer. We don't talk about that anymore. Then I slapped Cazador around, no problem. I had a bit of a scare with the Viconia fight at the start of it, but once I popped a globe, <laughs> they didn't have a damn clue what to do. Seraphok was an interesting one, I should say. I deceived him into thinking I was going to be cool with him, which led him to let himself be alone in a room with me, which the last time that that happened, I banged a talking squid. Wait, this might actually be the easiest way to take out Seravak, because look, nobody's... E Hold on, I think I might have discovered something here, but whatever. And then I proceeded to slash Seravak in the back. Here we go. I guess that is kind of dishonorable. <laughs> Fuck it though. And he went down in a single round. Didn't plan for it to happen that way, but it did. And there's no going back. So, well, I guess we push on. All right, well. Box done. <laughs> it was now my time to shine. It was my time as the Dark Urge to duel Orin on honor mode. No help from any party members. Except the 17,000 buff spells I did before the duel began. Now that was a great idea. You gotta you got give it to me. Now as a Lord Bard, I didn't think the odds were in my favor here, so I was definitely a little bit nervous. Little did I know though, a few summons to distract the Slayer and a couple casts of Hold Monster. I did miss two in a row though. And Orin was done. I even saved Pipsqueak Helson, although if you ask me, that wasn't what I came down there for. I have now made it to the end of the game, the final boss fight on honor mode. Got past the dragon, opened the portal, and the real battle had begun. One of the catches of this fight on honor mode is that the nether brain will become invulnerable to damage types that it takes in the previous round. But I pushed through it though, and I switched weapons with Lazel, used different types of spells, etc. But an unfortunate, unlucky Mind Blast stunned my bard and I lost her pretty early on in the battle. As the battle went on, I knew that my time was running out because this damn brain was blowing up all the platforms around it. There was only so many platforms left to stand on. What I didn't know was that this was the last round for the fight. Apparently on honor mode, the game doesn't show you a timer for the fight. Let me just continue on with the story, okay? So there was still a platform that was okay. I was almost sure that I would be able to get at least a few more attacks in and defeat the Netherbrain. It's now Shadowheart's turn, and she had a potion of speed active, and I started off with a successful guiding bolt. The final boss of the entire freaking game now only has 19 hit points left. If my mouth didn't taste like squid, I would say I could taste victory. At this point, I decided that I was going to use my highest spell slot available for my second action, a level four spell slot. I was going to cast Inflict Wounds on the brain. Pretty powerful melee spell. I was certain that this would be enough damage. Yeah, I gotta get close for Inflict Wounds though, and I might as well move to the only platform in this area that doesn't look like it's going to explode. At this point, you're probably noticing a haste spore cloud on that platform. And yeah, I saved my haste grenade for endgame to ensure that I have max power. Haste grenades are a blessing, right? Well, funny thing is, in the previous round, I actually hastened the nether brain alongside Lazel and Gale. Oh shit! Oh shit! But regardless, 19 hit points left on the Netherbrain. One action left on Shadowheart, and I gotta get close for that Inflict Wounds killing blow. I might as well walk over to the safe platform and get my victory. And then it happened. Obey. Why did that switch turns? What just happened?
Walking into a haste spore cloud when you have only one round left of a potion of speed active on a character is apparently a really, 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 really bad idea. This causes the potion of speed to end and your character becomes lethargic instead of gaining the benefits of the haste cloud. Shadow Heart's turn ending here was the end of the timer for the fight. I lost honor mode to a f***ing mushroom cloud. <laughs> oh man. Sovereign Spa really got his revenge.